Assistant Speaker, I seek leave to make an official response to the member of Delta Fly's question earlier in the week. Honorable members, is uh, leave granted? Aye. Uh, Minister, go ahead. Thank you, Assistant Speaker. Firstly, I would like to correct uh, Tok Tok Lomi Pastem previously, where me been an announcing Molsem RRA, uh, is then for uh, Rural Airstrip Association. I want to correct it. It's Rural Airstrip Agency. The Rural Airstrip Agency is not a party to the upgrade of Ballymore Airstrip into the coming or becoming a proposed airport. RAA, RAA has only been involved in maintenance upkeep of the Ballymore Airstrip to minimum civil aviation safety standards of unpaved aerodromes. AC Part 139-6 since 2018. Ballymore Airstrip is served by third level airline operators primarily for purpose of service delivery needs in the area such as area health, patrols, etc. Tropic Air, SIL, Strickland, Borsavi Foundation are the only other operators that are known to frequent the airstrip. In relation to the question by the Honourable Member from Delta Fly, the question, question one, Mr. Speaker, Igor Sam, given that Octeti Mining has been and still is the biggest revenue earner in the country. Can the national government direct NAC to upgrade the status of Ballymore Airport and recognize it as an airport instead of an airstrip since it's located in the new Delta Fly District Headquarters? Answer, Mr. Speaker, the national government appreciates the importance of Ballymore Airstrip and the strategic location the Ballymore Airstrip is situated. However, the national government is also aware of the Airstrip's legacy issues, which prevents the national government taking any steps to upgrade Ballymore Airstrip to a national airport. The reason being that one, existing state contract. There is already an existing state contract, number CSTB 2497, valued at 32,998,790 kina, GST inclusive, for the upgrading of the Ballymore Airport entered between the state and the company called EDA Civil Works Limited, the contractor, on 7 February 2013. The contract is yet to be fully performed. Number two, various national court proceedings and stay order from the Supreme Court. The contract was award, awarded by the O'Neill Dion government to the contractor. However, however due to non-payment of the contractual amount, the work ceased. In 2015, the contractor inst institute court proceeding WS number 1141 of 2015 against the state for non-payment of the contractual amount, plus variation and loss of business. 
Number three, in or about 28th September 2020, after a court annexed mediation in a related court proceeding, stay OS number 40 of 2020. Parties reached an agreement called Hilton Heads of Agreement to settle. On 21st October 2020, the Marape Bezel government made a NEC decision, number 237 2020, to settle the outstanding amount and for the contractor to return to site and complete the contract. The parties entered into a consent order and the National Court endorsed the order on the 2nd of November 2020 in the related proceedings. Subsequently, the, contract, the contractor was paid $21,249,895 kina and 98 toya, but the Board of Trustees of the Western Province non-CMC, People's Dividend Trust Account. In 2021, the Fly River Provincial Government appealed the order in the proceedings SCA number 145 of 2020, Supreme Court Appeal, and on 28, June 2021, obtain a stay order. Because of the stay order, the 2015 court proceedings has been stayed as well. The, the Supreme Court appeal has not been concluded as yet. Depending on the outcome of the Supreme Court appeal, the contractor will either complete the contract or cease altogether. Assessment of the viability of the upgrade of the airstrip. If the various court proceeding goes in favour of the contractor and it sees completing the contract altogether, the national government, through the shareholders of National Airport Corporation, can request the board of NAC to instruct the management of NAC to provide an assessment of the viability of the Ballymore airstrip being upgraded to an airport. Number two question, Mr. Speaker. Can the Marape Rosso government step in to fund the Ballymore airport project completion, possibly through the ADB loan, like all other major airport infrastructures in the country, and have it included in the national budget? Mr. Speaker, answer to that is no. The national government cannot fund the Ballymore Airport project completion. Reasons, based on the same reasons I have outlined earlier, to do so might amount to one, sub judice contempt, two, double funding the same project. And we've got to try to avoid that. We have to wait now for the courts to deliberate on this matter first and foremost. B, it depends on the outcome of the court proceedings and also the outcome of the study of the pilot airstrip from KEDEP 2. On the other hand, if the other court's del deliberation and the contract, contract to cease work altogether, the Ballymore airstrip will have to wait for four pilot airstrips upgrade to all weather standard projects under the current MOA between Asian Development Bank and the National Government KDIP 2 to be completed and a study to be prepared on the development of the developing a program to expand the upgrading of the rural airstrip to all weather standard. 
After the program is de developed, then consultation would have to be done through collaboration with NAC, CASA, Rural Airstrip Agency, and other stakeholders regarding the upgrade of the Ballymore Airstrip to all weather standard for national airport status. Number three question from the Honourable Member, Mr Speaker. Once funding is secured and made available by the national government, can the NAC make its business to have their engineers based on the ground to ensure successful completion according to the scope of works? My answer to that, Mr Speaker, is that it's already been answered in point two above. I will forward now a copy of this official response to my good honourable member for Delta Fly, so he has this document in his possession to then further action it at his decision. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Parliament.